Yeah, okay. So, we are rolling officially. Alright, um, so, foster care, you have been through it, you know about it, it's something a lot of people don't know about it. Like, what is the, your background with foster care? Um, so I had like kind of a two-sided story. Uh, a lot of people, like, if they're gonna end up in foster care, um, like you think of it as something that starts from childhood, but a lot of times it's not like that at all. Like we've had biological families, which I think is like not something people think of, like people really think about. Um, but I grew up with my mom. Um, my biological dad wasn't in the picture, and when I was like four, my uh, stepdad legally adopted me. Um, and then they ended up getting divorced. And when I was probably a sophomore in high school, uh, like my family was just going through like a hard time between like my stepdad being an alcoholic and the divorce and all that and like just my family's kind of crazy in general so um I ended up and in going into the foster care system between like a fight between me and my mom and like my mom ended up in the hospital um for like mental reasons and so um when you go into foster care uh the way foster homes work is the family whose home it is gets to pick like an age group and a sex that they want so like you can say like oh I want my house to be for boys ages four to seven, like that's who I want to take in. And so like a lot of times that's what happens, like these families, they want to take in young kids. So like there's not a lot of foster homes for like teenage, 15, 14 and up kids, 17, because you can't get out until you're 18. Um, so I ended up in like a group home for a while and like that was just like a crazy experience. Like you don't, they don't even let you go in the house, like they stop you and they like ask you to take off like any belts or like shoelaces and like pat you down and like act like, what? <laughs> like you guys are gonna like kill each other and it's just kind of crazy because like these are people that you don't even know but like you go to school with like when I walked in there like I recognized three faces from like people that like I didn't even know but I went to school with every day and like they were in foster care and they went home to this group home every night and like I had no idea before I stepped foot in there and like joined them and um so I was in a group home and then I ended up getting a foster home because um I was like still in foster care for my junior year and they wanted me to be like in a house that was like near my school. And so they put me in like foster home in Taunton and it was like kind of an awful experience. Like little things that like I had never worried about before because I had a biological family, like food security and like things like that. Like it just like wasn't a thing anymore. Like Pat used to have to like buy me all my like food and stuff. Um, and just like small things that like I never had to think about before and so it's really easy like when you're in that situation to not worry about things like college and like stuff that like other kids would be considering at that time but you don't really care anymore and it's like easy to like fall into like honestly like the statistic of like just being like a shitty kid at that point and um so yeah eventually when I was 17, that foster home that I was in got shut down for being like a hoarder house. And so um, they told me I could either move to a foster home above, Bo like a group home above Boston and have to go to school up there and finish my senior year there. Year there. Or I could um, move back in with my mom, but she wouldn't be considered my mom. She'd be my foster mom and we'd still have to see like a caseworker and like uh, I still basically have to be a foster kid, but I'd just be able to live with my mom. And so obviously I chose that because it was never really a choice for me to be there. They were kind of like restricting me from being with her. And so um, I went home and then until it, I was 18, I had to continue to like see my caseworker and stuff. And then when I was 18, they give you the decision to either sign yourself back in until you're 21 and they'll pay for your college, but you have to like remain a foster child or you can sign yourself out and be 18 and be your own emancipated person. And so I signed myself out when I was 18. Yeah, that's like, I see, I didn't know any of that. And then, like, you said, like, it's easy to get, like, caught up in that, too, which I could totally understand. Um, it makes, like, perfect sense now that, like, you hear it. So, how does your, you have, if you just want to talk about this and kind of say what you do, because you yeah. know from that experience. Um, so... One day I was on campus and this little kid came up to me and I was backpack and there was like some teenage girl like standing there and I didn't really know like why this like eight year old child was like on our campus because it was like a school day and he I had gelato and he was like where'd you get that and I was like who are you like why are you here and um he was like oh like that's my mentor and like during the day like for once a month during the day I follow her through her classes and like we hang out for the day and like we hang out other times too and like she helps me with my homework and I was like wow that's like really cool and then like 
it's like gelato's in there and like they got the cookie monster today so like shit's tight you know and so like he ran back and then I like thought about it and I was like I really want to be like a mentor or something so I googled it and like the only thing that really came up was uh the Rudd's adoption mentor program and so the lady who runs that her name is Jen Dolan and she's like one of like I think three or four uh, psych professors that like work in that program and um, I contacted her and we had a meeting and she kind of told me that her RUDS program really focuses on children who were adopted as babies internationally and they set people up who are college age with kids who are younger that have that same experience so I don't really fit into that um, specific folder of people. So I was just telling her like is there any other way like I can mentor around here and you know she was just like telling me like there's kind of nothing really going on with kids in foster care and like I found this problem with like a lot of uh, UMass faculty have actually adopted children a lot of them internationally but international adoptions have started to go down and now more foster adoptions are starting to go up so there's a lot of uh, UMass faculty that have adopted children out of the foster system and like it's a hard thing to go through because these children have problems that you can't really understand and so a lot of these parents seek help through the psych department here and um Jen just told me about that and I thought that was like something that was just a missing piece within the psych department so uh, I asked her if she would help me start a program and she told me yeah so it doesn't really have a name yet um, there's only six of us so far and then Jen um, but basically we meet and it's still in the works but we're trying to like go into Holyoke High School and like walk them through the Common App and through FAFSA and like help them get scholarships and stuff like that and um, Jen as like our faculty sponsor she wants to start looking into getting grants to get scholarships for like the kids our age that we could give out like maybe through like a writing contest or like through the mentoring program somehow like the kids choose like what mentor they want to give a scholarship to like I don't know something like that um, but it's really just to like focus on those kids and like specifically too we want to uh, implement through NSO um, getting like freshman kids who come from foster care acclimated to being at UMass because it's like a really big change to go from like being in a foster home being in a group home to like coming here and even if you make it here like that's only step one like a lot of those kids drop out like the dropout rate for foster kids is like close to 80 percent and so um, like that first year is really critical so just having like friends and mentors within UMass too that like we can reach out to each other and like be there for each other um, is really like what I'm focusing on. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't think about stuff like that too because how else would you know kind of unless you've yeah. been through it and um, yeah I think that's really interesting so your program like would like it would kind of like set a foundation I guess to kind of help kids apply and then not only apply, but um, like be able to have people to talk to and stuff like that. And then, so that like, that brings me to like that last question that I mentioned earlier, which is basically just like, if like talking about it is kind of hard because there are like confidentiality, like restrictions and stuff yeah. that I found out like from you and stuff and just like research. And um, so how important do you feel that it is to like, put this stuff like like your flyers and stuff like out in public and be able to like talk about it um yeah i think it's really important and i think like a lot of the people that are behind it um they would choose to speak out for it but a lot of times it is scary too because people who don't know don't know and so um it's something that is new to a lot of people and um i just think it's important for these kids because there's not a lot of us that are going to understand and so that's why I really wanted to reach out and do it and talk about it and bring it up especially because there is a lot of support for the internationally adopted kids but um, that's starting to decline more and more now and it's becoming more foster care adoptions and I think the not only the psychology behind it but I think that's a different experience and um, I think both experiences are tough and it takes like some learning within yourself to figure out like who you are when it happens um, but I think it's different uh, it's a different path of doing that and so I think it's important that these kids get their own separate support um, but still within the same program yeah and so that's why I like working with Jen uh, because she has like that experience as well is there like anything else that you wanted to add to to this because that's like great right there like what we have so if there's anything else that you'd like to say that I could like put in there? Um, no, I just guess like yeah. if anyone like contact me if like you're interested in joining, um, if you've like been in foster care, um, yeah. All right.
Thank you. That was really good.